The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Joining us for the evening news here on ABS, Antigua's News Authority. My name is Garfield Burford. And I'm Sequoia Servia. Thank you for joining us. What had been Tropical Storm Elsa strengthened into Hurricane Elsa and battered islands in the southeastern Caribbean throughout Friday. That's why Sequoia, the cyclone passed well south of Antigua and Barbuda and the rest of the Leeward Islands. But the island was not completely unaffected as there were wind gusts throughout the day. Joining us this evening early for more on the developing situation is meteorologist Orvin Page. Good evening, Orvin. Uh, where is the hurricane now at this point? And is Antigua and Barbuda likely to get any more wind and rain from it? Hello to you, Garfield and Sequoia and all those joining us here at ABS Television. At 5 p.m. local time, the center of Hurricane Elsa, located just about 180 miles to the west-southwest of St. Vincent, moving towards the west-southwest at around 30 miles per hour, with peak winds 85 miles per hour. Elsa would have moved across portions of, uh, well, just south of uh, Barbados and across portions of uh, well, just about five to ten miles on the northern coastlines of off the northern coastlines of St. Vincent, dumping lots of rain, gusty winds over portions of Barbados, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent. Now located in the Eastern Caribbean Sea and on a trajectory to pass just south of uh, Haiti and between the channel of Jamaica and Haiti, where hurricane warnings are currently in effect level of wind experience for those islands? Well, across Barbados, they had wind gusts of up to 75 knots, pretty strong winds for an island experiencing their first hurricane for just about 65 Sorry. years. And so you could imagine what that experience was like for those residents in Barbados. Across St. Lucia, they also had some wind gusts up to tropical storm force. And because this system would have passed just to the north of St. Vincent, it puts St. Vincent on the weaker side in terms of the wind regime, not escaping the rain that would have uh, developed across these islands because of the passage of Hurricane Elsa. Of course, the strongest part of it, uh, Orvin, is the northeastern quadrant of the storm, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And so for areas uh, like Barbados in particular and St. Lucia, they would have experienced even more windy conditions uh, compared to St. Vincent being on the southern side of the passage of the storm. For us, here in Antigua and Barbuda, we had some wind gusts close to 30 knots and uh, some rain bands moved towards the north and at times threatening to produce even more rainfall. It did not materialize, but we still had some rainfall this afternoon from Elsa. Main effects from Elsa across Antigua and Barbuda, windy conditions will likely continue tonight and subsiding by mid-morning tomorrow Saturday. Just very quickly, Orvin has the worst passed, therefore, for Antigua and Barbuda. Yes, indeed, the worst has passed in terms of the winds. Winds should begin to subside in another 6 to 12 hours or so. Rains are still likely, not the kind of torrential rains that would have been experienced over portions of uh, Barbados, St. Vincent, and St. Lucia. We're expecting to see some light showers tonight, but the showers should pretty much trickle and uh, pretty much uh, abate by tomorrow, uh, Saturday. Thank you so much, Orvin, for the update, and we'll see you towards the end of the newscast. Certainly. Really appreciate it, Orvin. Now, telling you about this developing story as well, National Office of Disaster Services, now its Deputy Director, Sherrod James, urges residents to ensure their disaster emergency kits are in place. James's caution came Friday as Hurricane Elsa battered countries in the southeastern Caribbean poses no threat to us at this point in time. It doesn't mean that we should lower our guard. Um, at this point in time, we should make sure that our plans are in a state of readiness. Um, God forbid that we need to activate ourselves. Well, uh, the, the deputy director says people should remain vigilant considering meteorologists have forecast an above normal hurricane season this year. He says people should not wait until an advisory to put their kits together. In your normal shopping, when you buy your groceries and so on, you put a can aside. So you buy three tins of Vienna sausage, put one aside. Well, James says you should check your kit once a month uh, to keep it updated and replace items before they expire. He encourages residents to download the CAP app for advisories from the emergency services. You can find more hurricane preparedness advice on NOD's website, including a complete list of recommended hurricane disaster supplies. 
Indeed. Let's move on to another developing story at this hour because Prime Minister Arnold Gaston Brown wants the world's biggest polluters to be required to pay, uh, to pay and to provide compensation to vulnerable states such as those in the Caribbean. Prime Minister Brown was addressing a World Health Organization media briefing today on the challenges faced by small island developing states. His comments uh, today on the heels of that two-day summit of the World Health Organization with officials from these countries on how to ensure resilient health systems in the face of multiple threats and risks. Here's more from Courtney Joseph. Now, despite the good efforts of the COVAX facility, developed partners are not doing enough. But the economic onslaught of the pandemic uh, says have limited access to vaccines. We still have a problem globally of vaccine nationalization. Well, uh, Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown, they're urging the United States or the World Health Organization on that matter. Meanwhile, he explains there will be dire cons consequences for these small island developing states if this situation persists. We now run the risk of disintegrating into what I consider to be economic sclerosis, eroding decades of hard won gains. And that should not be allowed to happen. Our tourism industry is all but at a standstill. Our economies are shattered, and there's much anxiety among SIDS. A Grace, a Grace Christian Academy former student has been named the Grade 6 National Assessment Top Student and will be heading to the Antigua Girls High School next semester. Education officials gave an overview on this year's results during a press conference today as Jessica Russell reports. The student who would have topped the list with that 378 that I mentioned earlier is Alian E. Challenger, and she is a female student from the Grace Christian Academy. The results are out for the Grade 6 National Assessment, which took place last month. The exams review primary students' performance in language arts, mathematics, social studies, and science. It's the first time the assessment was held since 2019, as the exams were canceled the last year because of the COVID-19 pandemic. 1,446 students took the exams, which kept their original format. More students delivered a top-tier performance. In 2019, we had 601 students who performed at this level. And this year, in spite of all the challenges of the pandemic, we had 655 students who performed at this level um, for 45% of our student cohort. In the second level, there was a slight decline. In 2019, we had 577 of our students performing at that level, 43%. This year, we had 593 for 41%. 13% of students performed at the third level, an increase of 1% in comparison to 2019, while level four remained unchanged at 1%. Officials say they are concerned with a five-point drop in the average score for science. For science, in 2019, the mean score was 63. For this year, it is 58. We had a kind of significant drop in performance. Meanwhile, only 14 students from across eight government schools managed to make it into the top 100 list. However, 86 students from across 17 private schools were top performers. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Meanwhile, reactions now from the country's top national assessment student, Alian Challenger of Grace Christian Academy. She and her family are beaming with delight after receiving the news about her stellar performance. They spoke with our Terry Andrew. So we come to Terry's story in a short while. Meanwhile, with the advent of universal education, all students taking the grade six national assessment are given automatic entry to secondary schools. Director of Education Claire Brown says this is how students are placed. Place of residence, special education, and now one or two students, and I said this year is one, was placed based on health and safety concerns. However, only students making the top 100 list will get to choose which public secondary school they'd like to attend. Brown is adamant only in certain circumstances will there be a shift in placement for other students. We placed the Old Road student to Glanville Secondary and not to a school close to where he resides. Then we will look at that. But barring errors like those and some health or safety issue that was not previously uh, considered, Barring those, no adjustments to the grade six national assessment place, placement will be made. 
Director Brown says changes in address will also not be considered. You can't come now and tell us, Mr. Uh, Charles, at uh, this 11th hour, when mm -hmm. we balance the numbers, mm -hmm. that you now live at Fort Road. Mm -hmm. You see, if you change your residence, you should have alerted the school long o'clock. Meanwhile, Education Minister, the Honorable Darrell Matthew, congratulates all grade six students who sat the national assessments this year. Minister Matthew says this year's results yielded similar results to last year's. We have 25 schools represented in the top 100. And so that works out to an average of approximately four per school, but we do know how numbers work. But it goes to show that there is a broad spectrum of educational ability um, across the board. He also thanked the educators who prepared students for the national assessments and parents who supported their children in this difficult time during the pandemic. I would like to thank all of the students for the commitment and the perseverance that they have displayed the, the, the sort of ability, the stick to as it's called, to really keep their head down, to, you know, tough it out, and to really persevere through the most difficult of circumstances. You have done well. Minister Matthew also encouraged students to not only enjoy their summer, but to mentally prepare for sec September when they will be in secondary schools. This developing story in our small island developing states, such as those in the Caribbean, are facing significant challenges on multiple fronts, challenges compounded by the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, there have been calls for the richest countries in the world, comprised of the group of seven or G7 countries, to do more to assist vulnerable states to build back better after the pandemic. Now, this evening, we cross live to the capital of one of the world's, lar well, to the world's largest economy to speak with Antiguan Properties Ambassador to the U.S. and Organization of American States, Sir Ronald Sanders. Sir Ronald, as we have been reporting this week, just completed his second stint as president of the Organization of American States Permanent Council. Good evening, Sir Ronald. Thank you so much for joining us live. Uh, let's start off here. Two members of the G7 are in the OS, namely the U.S. and Canada. Now, how have they been addressing the challenges faced by SIDS, such as COVID-19 and climate change? Not satisfactorily enough, in my view. I'm not sure if we're getting a feedback. And is that my fault? Yes, we're here, able to hear you loud and clear, Ambassador. Please go ahead. Yes, no, I'm saying not, not good enough in my view. Uh, they are both countries with uh, great resources and one would have hoped uh, would have done better in terms, of the, in terms of the response both on COVID-19 and uh, also on climate change. Uh, President Biden has taken a different view on climate change than did President Trump. But so far, uh, we have seen many promises, but not enough deliverables. And we need to see deliverables on both of those things uh, before we can say that there will be dramatic improvement. Yes. Uh, now, what uh, does the OS need to do to make itself more responsive, Ambassador Sanders, and perhaps we dare say more uh, reactive, well, responsive, and also relevant to the challenges faced by small island developing states? Well, the Organization of American States, in my view, is a confused organization. I've said so myself, even though I've been president of it twice. Uh, the fact that I've been president of it does not mean that I've agreed with uh, many of the things that it has done, because those things are done by a majority vote. Uh, nor do I always agree with my good friend, the Secretary General, Luis Almagro, on the statements that he has made. I think the organization has focused far too much on uh, the agenda of countries like the United States and Canada, and not enough on the agenda of its smaller member states, uh, like those of the Caribbean and Central America who have severe problems of development uh, related to climate change, related to the need for vaccines, uh, related to being marginalized in the, in the world's financial system. Uh, and there is a development pillar to the Organization of American States. It's not just about human rights. It's not just about democracy, though those two things are important. It's also about development. And there simply is not enough uh, emphasis on development uh, in the organization. And that, for me, is where it must improve. And that is what we uh, in the, Ca the Caribbean countries, representing 14 of the member states, ought to be pushing for.
Indeed. And finally, Ambassador, uh, thank you so much for your time. By the way, you've also been commended uh, quite highly for your uh, stewardship of the Permanent Council following, of course, uh, the untimely passing of the Ambassador of Paraguay. Uh, Haiti, for example, the Haitian delegation has commended you highly. That is one of the key challenges facing uh, the OS at this point. What is OS doing to address the challenges of Haiti? Of course, there are other challenges across the OS, Nicaragua, Peru, etc. Let's zoom in on Haiti. What is being done by the OS on that? Not enough, again, uh, and not the right things, in my view. Uh, Haiti is in severe crisis. It has a political problem. It has a government that cannot manage or govern the country properly. Uh, there are accusations of links between uh, the government and criminal gangs. Uh, there's kidnappings. There are rapes. There is murder. Are happening there on a continuous basis. The people of Haiti are crying out for attention. Human rights groups try desperately to bring the Haitian problem to the attention of the Organization of American States. But uh, big countries have a vested interest in keeping uh, the government there in office, uh, Mo Jovenel Moïse, because he serves their purposes. But Haiti needs attention. And we in CARICOM, have been raising this question repeatedly. Uh, certainly the government of Antigua and Barbuda and I as the ambassador have drawn attention to the need to do something to help the Haitian people. And it must not just be an agenda that is pushed by the United States and Canada for their own peculiar political interests. We'll follow that issue certainly with you as the weeks uh, continue. Of course, Haiti uh, will be having uh, presidential and legislative elections later this year. Thank you, Ambassador. Really appreciate your time. Uh, and again, uh, we'll follow up on these issues, especially uh, on, on the if, if I had a chance, if I had a, If I had a chance to tell you, the presidential and, it, and the legislative elections that are going to be happening later this year, if they happen, are part of the problem. So just to say that they're going to have elections doesn't mean a thing. There is no, only 30% of the Haitian people have been registered for an election. Most of them have been disenfranchised. There's election machinery that is not transparent and it is not independent. All of that is part of the problem in Haiti right now. Indeed, a very, uh, uh, certainly a fraught issue there in Haiti. Ambassador, thank you so much. We'll certainly uh, keep you, uh, certainly keep talking with you on these issues. Appreciate it. Thank you. All the best. Thanks very much. That's Ambassador Sir Ronald Sanders, Antiguan Barbados Ambassador to the uh, United States as well as Organization of American States, just completing his second stint as President of the OS, uh, secure, uh, sorry, the OS Permanent Council. When we come back from this break, more of the national developments that we've been tracking closely for you, including this one. Port Manager provides an update on the impact of COVID-19 on the port's performance and comments on the prospects. We'll have that story and more upcoming on the ABS Evening News on air and online. Do stay with us, please. At Nagico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like knowing you're covered when your house gets flooded. Getting your settlements quickly and fairly when a fire hits your home. And making sure your business can keep going even after an accident happens on site. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Snacks, juices, and household supplies. When you shop at KL Distributors, we promise affordable prices and variety like you've never seen. Have fun with our three for five snack pack. You mix and match popcorn, Cheetos, Doritos, enough for the kids during these long summer days. We also carry a variety of cereals, granola bars, and healthy snacks. Juices and sodas, we've got it all. Sunny D and Capri Sun for the kids. Ocean Spray, Tropicana, Canada Dry, and Ice Tea. Pick up your favorite house.
household items, supplies such as laundry detergent and fragrance boosters, and other cleaning agents. Free island-wide delivery on orders over $60. We're k &L Distributors and Supplies, Sir George Walter Highway, Utopia Park Complex, adjacent Mr. Terminator Car Wash. A piece of the rock? What are your hopes for the future? I've been looking to start my own business. A stepping stone to independence. For my retirement home. Well, my green thumbs <laughs> is the right time to farm. We want to build, you know, a nice view, the side of the hill. A legacy for my kids and their generations to follow. Whatever motivates you, there's never been a better time to own a piece of the rock. With ACB Caribbean at your side, get 0% down and 100% financing and up to 30 years to repay. Plus, pre-approval for an ACB Caribbean credit card. Apply today, call, or visit us at acbonline.com to take advantage of this great offer. ACB Caribbean, simply smarter banking. Calypso. The ABS, ABS Summer Night Concert, Concert Series, Series continues this Friday in it's studio. And, and this week, week it's Calypso, Calypso, Calypso music. Calypso. So here we go. We have Bloody Moses, the Sprocket, Zachary, Trinada, the Dagger, the Instructor, Epic Bike, Singing Sudden, Redding, Van Timos, Solo, Featron, along with the Police Band with a tribute to Sir MacLean Emmanuel. 8 p.m. Friday. Friday night in studios, Calypso, Calypso Music. Welcome back. Now, there were no new cases of COVID-19 recorded as of 6 p.m. on Wednesday of this week after all 121 samples tested at the Sir Lester Bird Mount St. John's Medical Center returned all negative results. The Health Ministry's latest dashboard therefore shows active cases remaining at zero and the country's case count at 1,264. Meanwhile, 36,583 people have now received their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, of whom 27,872 have gone on to receive a second dose. Well, the winner of the second raffle for those who have recently been vaccinated against COVID-19 has received his check. Kelvin Peets is the, is the latest lucky winner of $5,000. Government Senator Chanela Gavaya handed over the check early Friday on Antigua Barbuda today. On behalf of the government of Antigua and Barbuda, we want to present to you this $5,000 check. You are the lucky winner of our COVID-19 5,000 incentive draw. Congratulations, Mr. Pete. Now, Pete says he got vaccinated for a reason bigger than cash. I do it because not of the money. I didn't know about the money part. But I helped. People who get either their first or second shot will have the opportunity to win $5,000 in the weekly raffle. The draw will continue until the end of August after Cabinet decided on Wednesday to extend the incentive to eight weeks instead of four. Meanwhile, here's an update on the public vaccination campaign on the Sister Isle. Public health nurse in Barbuda, Janita Curry, says so far 570 people have availed themselves of the first jab. 450 more doses have been administered since May 13th. This brings the total doses to 902. 412 individuals have gone on to receive their second dose. She says Barbuda has an estimated population of 1,300 people. Well, as the second half of 2021 begins, Sport Manager Darwin Telemac says the Port Authority is hopeful there will soon be a major turnaround in port activity. We were locked down for most of this period last year, and um, being open, we thought it would have been a little bit more uh, buoyant, but uh, the economy is still recovering. Lots of unemployment in different pockets. Well, he says activity at the port has fluctuated from week to week. Well, performance has not been as, um, as excited or as great as we would have expected. Uh, we're hoping that in the second half, things get better. All indicators point to that. And um, if it does get better, we hope it gets really much uh, better. All right, and of course, uh, as we promised you a bit earlier on, we will be having a bit later on an update from and a reaction, therefore, from the uh, top student in the grade six national assessment and her parents, proud parents, proud family they are. I'll be hearing from them in a very short while. In the meantime, let's go to another break. When we come back, we'll turn our attention to news overseas. Well, it's been uh, scenes of devastation in the southeastern Caribbean. We'll tell you all the latest about what Hurricane Elsa has been doing down south. Upcoming on the ABC News, on air and online. Please stay with us, please.